Okay. Um, you know, really excited about this opportunity for me. Anytime you take a bus ticket like, like that and you get in to work on Sunday and that, that long uh, bus ride home, get home late Saturday night. And Sunday, it's uh, not fun, you know, but we have to uh, face the facts. So we we got to take a good look at ourselves, um, you know, again, see the things, uh, the areas where we're falling short, address them. You know, we can't, we don't hide from them. They, they are certainly issues. Uh, you have to credit Tennessee, as I mentioned, after the game. That's one heck of a football team. Very good. You have to play good in all three phases. You got to piece it together and you got to make plays. You got to make competitive plays. I felt like our team um, played with very good intensity in a lot of areas. Not, not completely, in a lot of areas. I thought their competitive nature was very high. I thought they competed. I thought defensively they really competed and played on an edge. And uh, certainly we made some mistakes, but uh, played with very good intensity. I thought, you know, offensively we tried to be physical. At times we were uh, physical. The guys strained. We moved the ball at times. Um, you got to capitalize. You have to keep up. I mentioned it. I'll address it again briefly. I mentioned it after the game, but you know, you get drives. You got to make competitive catches. You got to convert when you're in the red zone. You got to try to keep pace, and uh, you know, hopefully that changes things. But with a team like Tennessee, if you uh, if you do not and you turn it over and you give them good field position, whether it be special teams or uh, lack of efficiency offensively. Um, it could get out of hand in a hurry. So there's a lot of things that uh, there's no panic. Um, we have to get back on track and uh, get back to work. We've done that before. And if you compete in this league, you better get used to it. So, um, you know, the, that, that's not good. Uh, you know, we, we will never accept that. But uh, we better get back on the horse here real quick and get ready to compete and play um, Missouri. Again, you know, you look at it each year, you look at it at the end of the year. You know, there's there's teams in our league, uh, uh, you got to look at it um, for some of us much like the NFL. It's very, there's a lot of parity and uh, there's some there's some elite teams in our league on each side in the East and the West and then there's a lot of teams fighting and, uh, you know, Missouri is one of those teams. I give uh, Coach Drink a lot of credit because they had a a brutal loss, um, you know, a few games back uh, with uh, in the Auburn game where they essentially were an inch from winning the game. And uh, the team could have went, you know, any which way. And they turn around and play an incredible game, play Georgia as good as anybody's played them um, and had a tough loss, go to Florida and play incredibly well. You could take a couple plays out of that, they could win. Um, <clears throat> then they, you know, beat – beat Bandy and beat South Carolina. And so they are playing extremely hard. He, he got those guys uh, regrouped. And uh, they could very easily be uh, five and three, just like us, and uh, right in, the, in the, the middle of the pack uh, with the rest of the SEC. So uh, this is obviously a big game for us to, get, you know, again, not let uh, one turn into two. I don't, you know, think that'll happen. I think we have strong leadership on our team. We've already addressed it some, you know, post game, and uh, got to get back to work today with our meetings and with practice, and get ready to go play a team in Missouri that I, again, I'm very impressed with. I think they're playing extremely hard. Um, uh, Coach, you know, has done a really good job of getting that team uh, playing at a high level and and uh, doing some really good things. And uh, you know, much like us, after a, a tough loss or bad beats, you know. Uh, you could go either way, and uh, they've responded the right way, and I expect our team to do the same. Mark, you had, it seemed like you had several guys get banged up in that game. DeAndre is the only one not on the depth chart, so just kind of let things stand with him and Chris. And yeah, I mean, everybody should be day to day. I mean, with DeAndre, it's it's doubtful, um, you know, but you, you don't know. You know, put some medicine in there, ice it up, and you know maybe, but uh, chances are he's not going. Play and and um, you know so we'll be uh, you know DeAndre is a great leader he'll have a, he'll still have a great impact and uh, and Trevin will step up and play well. Mark Harper in the game this past weekend characterized as embarrassing for you guys, but considering that Tennessee was week three, would you call it embarrassing? You know that Tennessee is who they are. I'm not. You're not going to get a, a headline out of me saying that. Um, you could say whatever you want. 
you know. I mean, I, I, I'm not going to use that word. I'm not not pleased. Is Jeremy okay? Is he trending to the right direction? He seemed to be laboring, walking off the field after the game. We'll see. I think uh, you know he, he's he's uh, day to day. He should be out there today or tomorrow. Mark, I asked you after the game just about overall the the state where the offense is right now. After you watch the film, kind of just where do you think the progress has been made, and are you still confident that this is the system that works? Well, I mean, it, you know, obviously you're not very pleased with that result. I mean, that that's hard to say after a game like that because, um, it, once again, I mean, I'm smart enough to not to get a headline out of, out of me with uh, acting like I'm pleased with that performance because I'm clearly not, and uh, nobody should be. Um, so you have to always look at things and evaluate things and, and see the good and the bad and where you're falling short and, and you know what else are you going to do? I mean, there, there's nothing drastic. I mean, you certainly better look at it and you better address it and you better get it fixed, or you're not going to last. But again, we've been through it, and uh, you know there's some areas where everybody can do better. You know where we could certainly coach better. We could put them in better position. Uh, guys can step up and make plays. You know we could you know personnel. You name it. Injury, but. There's enough blame to go around, and uh, we are constantly evaluating, constantly looking at things, and, and striving uh, to be better. Mark, I know you said that Howard Smith knows Davidson and Sackett's house. You got to go to Missouri. You just got a little bit of that. Um, how are some good things that you took out of this game? And I thought it was safe. Uh, I just think one of the kick with Derek Jackson. 14. Right? Yeah, yeah Derek. Uh, played well, and uh, you know he, you know it's hard. You know they, there's you know they, there's you're not going to be perfect, but uh, did a lot of good things. I thought again the the, the competitiveness with uh, you know a talented team being put in bad positions at times, stepping up, holding no field goal, miss field goal. You know just doing things and grinding out some tough stops, but you know there were some there were some breakdowns again that I've already went through. I don't need to throw darts at any particular player or anything like that. There were some things that are that are inexcusable against a team like that on both sides and in special teams, all three phases. So, um, but there was there was a lot of uh, guys straining and competing against some very good players and stepping up and doing some good things. So, you know, that's just a piece of it. I know it, it, it's, it's easy. It's easy to be a punching bag when you lose like that and – and take those shots, but you know, for our team, you know, I am going to take the good and, and and show them and watch it, and and uh, the, you know, there's there's things in there that that we did well. Let me show what a big what crowds can do to a post team on the field last year. That's uh, just from Florida and LSU, and so having said that, did the home crowd since he have a lot to do with some of these all stars or more? Yeah, I mean, I think you see that in every SEC game. I mean, you know, that that, that uh, when you're on the road, there's going to be some. To say that it didn't have any effect is not true. You got to be able to handle it and overcome it. Um, I, I don't think it was the end all be all, uh, but uh, certainly a tough, tough environment and things that, you know, at times we handled it very well. It wasn't like it was a, you know, that that wasn't why we were so inefficient. Let's put it that way. Mark Missouri. Looked uh, much improved on defense. What do you see from them? From yeah, the yeah, I really uh, think they're they're playing extremely hard. You know, they always have some guys up front that are disruptive and and uh, play very physical. And uh, you know, their structure is good and uh, they're mixing it up. So uh, you know, they're they're playing very good as a team. As I mentioned, you just look at them and and early on, you know, after a very tough beat with the Auburn, and then. Uh, and then playing some really good games and coming up short, they still, you could see the progress. You could see them grinding and playing hard. And again, that's a credit to Coach Drink because that's not easy, you know. And uh, uh, believe me, and, and you know, they're, I know what we're going to get when we go up there. We're going to get a team that's, that's fired up and, and coached well and, and ready to play and compete. And we're all, we're all scrapping. Like I said, there's some elite teams on both sides, the East and the West. And then there's a whole bunch of teams that are, that are in there trying to compete for victories.
Mark, when you looked at Will's play from Saturday, when you get in a situation like that, do you get behind? Did he seem to have the tendency to force some throws, uh, which would be natural in that position? What, what did you think the way he played? It, it was. It, it was, um, you know, it was, it was tough because he, you know, he got, you know, they got some pressure on him. That we got behind. There were some reads in there that, yeah, you look at it, and he was trying to force things and make things happen. Even with some of the, uh, you know, run or pass options that we had. You know, after we ran them several times, I mean, the 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 look was to give it. You know, and 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 he's forcing it, but that it's not all on him. You know, I think it's the uh, the situation we were in, and uh, we certainly need to do a better job. You know, putting him and uh, all of our players in a better position. You know, and 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 you know we all share in that. And players got to step up and make plays. We talked about going into it that we we're going to have some one on ones. You got to go make them. And you know we came up came up short, and the game got out of hand. Uh, you know, I think you know the yeah. Mark Will is so competitive, and I know he wants to stay in there the whole game. But toward the end, there the score was kind of out of hand. Did you think about maybe taking him out? I addressed it after the game. I think you saw that. We handed the ball off. So I, there was no reason for an operation to get a fumble. You know what I mean? He's plenty warm, but, I mean, that was not, you know, we, we, we handed the ball off. He had arguably his, his worst game. How, how is he doing mindset-wise? You say you never have to worry about how he bounces back. No, he'll be ready to go. Yeah, he'll be ready to go. He, he already addressed it after the game, you know, and – and didn't point fingers. He, he, know, he knows he can play better, and, and the unit can play better, and the team can play better. And so uh, that's the type of leadership we're looking for. What have you seen from Trevor in that linebacker spot? Pardon me? What have you seen from Trevor in that linebacker spot? Yeah, he's always, you know, you, you know we've always been high on him, just, just athletic, and, uh, you know, he's been getting, um, you know, reps for, for years, and, you know, ready to go. He's had a really strong leader and a player he's putting time with in front of him. But, uh, but um, you know, he's he's uh, very physical and athletic, and you know, he's getting more and more experience. Mark, in the past, when the offense specifically has kind of hit some bumps, you've talked about simplifying things. And I know when Rich came in here, we, we kind of touted his knowledge and how complex his systems were. Is, is that a Thought of maybe having to maybe dumb things down just a little bit. Yes, yeah, I think it's a fair criticism and things we got to look at and you know why and where and where we're spending our time and how, how you know all those things we have to look at and put our put our players in a position to be more successful. So that's that's on us as well. Yes. And you probably point a lot of the ball games and you say, well, maybe got to work from here, got to work from there. Uh, that was the fourth and one when uh, it was on their side. The guy, right? They got they had a pair of jumps and they got the first down. It appeared that we weren't ready for it. Do you think it made that point where you may have gotten away from it and you couldn't have a stop there? Um, it, that wasn't. You know, there's many other plays. I mean, as I tell the team and I'll tell you, you know, there, there's many, many plays in a game and sometimes it's not the obvious and that's. Not an obvious one, so I'm not criticizing the question. But uh, you know, I tell the team the same thing: you don't know what one play can change the outcome of a game. I think at that point in time, it was a low-scoring game, maybe 13 or 7-6 or something to that effect. But um, very difficult to stop it anyway, a fourth and six inches. And uh, but yeah, I think. It's fair. They were looking at it. You know how fast they go, and we were trying to give them a signal. They're looking, and by the time they turned, it, yeah, I don't think we were in great shape. You know. Mark, you had some offensive drives that really clicked, and you had some momentum like midway through the second quarter, I think. It looked like Tennessee back on its heels a little bit. When you studied the video of that, what kind of things did you take out of that that, that you can present to your team and say, look, you know, we've done this? Well, that's just it. You know, I think – you know going into that game that we talked about it, you, you know, we have to sustain drives and score when we get those opportunities. Number one, just, just again, our our approach, you know, and, and so, you know, you, you just – we didn't make the plays. You know, again, we have a, a third down that – or, a, yeah, a third down that we have an opportunity to 
get it to the 30, maybe the 20, maybe score. I, I don't know. I mean, there was definitely one safety back there that could have cleaned it up, but you have an opportunity to try to make him miss, you know, and, uh, and then the next possession, the interception, it just, again, you, you just simply can't do that against Tennessee. You, you have to score when you have opportunities. Um, or, uh, you know, and, and that's where, again, uh, you know, I, I realize, like, I'm a defensive coach. I mean, you know, points matter. But if you constantly give them possessions in good field position against Tennessee, nobody's going to hold up. When you watch the film, was the extra point that got blocked, was that a low kick and then the punt, too? That it was too much penetration, you know, on that, and uh, too much penetration on the, uh, on the field goal. And um, I thought it could have been higher and a little quicker up. You know, very, but that's a lot of times it's close. We're very close on four or five, you know, kicks a game. You know what I mean? And we're, we're a fraction off. If the, you know, and, you, and you're counting on just a little slower operation or a little, you know, a little bit of a lower kick. And we've gotten a few too that way. But uh, um, yeah, so that was it. And then on, on, the, on the punt, we, we, you know, had a, it's it just not good enough. I mean, there's no excuse. It's simply not good enough. We got to do a better job and uh, we will. And um, so, Mark, do you hear people say kids, kids today, they're not as affected as maybe adults are by things. Do you think it's going to be? Uh, will this team be able to like flush it and move on? Maybe even more, even more so than the coaches who stick in their crawl. Yeah, I mean, uh, that we have to. There's no, there's no if, ands, or buts. You have to. Put it behind you. You, you. We always address things and and uh, you know look at things and self evaluate and, and uh, try to get better and win or lose. And that that's not going to change. There are different approaches. Um, and uh, you know again, like and I will talk to the team about that. And it is what it is. I mean, I mean, NFL bad beats, SEC bad beats. I mean, what do you? What, do you just fold the tent? I mean, you just give up after some tough losses? I mean, that's – I mean, there's five teams in the SEC with a better record than us. And there's some elite, you know I mean, elite, as good as anybody in the country. You know, and, uh, and so it, our players understand that nobody's going to give us anything. Nobody's going to feel sorry for us. You've got to get back to work. That's the only way around it. I said it after the two losses going into Mississippi State, our team responded, but – you know, we have to go play well because this team's playing well and they bounced back uh, from some tough losses and, and uh, really have, have done a good job. And we have to respond to that. The last time we went up there, I didn't like our approach and we got our butts kicked. And so, you know, we're playing our early game. We got back late Saturday, but so what? It is what it is. Uh, the situation is what it is. So we're going to we're gonna pick it up. We're going to work. We're going to punch the clock this week. And... Um, you know, I was telling Susan walking over here. I, I feel surprisingly freaking jacked up and great. Why? Because you have to. You have to be. You have to be. Yeah, I felt like crap. You know, all night Saturday night and all day Sunday. But today, I'm freaking jacked up, ready to go. Brad used the term after the game uh, football. And I got I got to say, I got to give Dr. Capilouto part of that because I was exhausted and tired and worked all day, didn't sleep and. Late last night, I think Doc was coming in from out of town and stopped in my office about nine o'clock, and I was in there half dreary. And he was like, "I just wanted to pick, you know what I mean, patch, you know, just say get back in the fight." And I appreciate that. Yeah. What does something like that mean to you? Well, it means a lot. You know, it just like as I was hitting a little wall. I was like, you know, give me some more coffee, give me some more. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but you know, it's just it 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 does because like. You know, as the leader of this football team, you gotta you, you gotta set the tone, and uh, and uh, you know I'm fortunate to have great leaders in the administration that helped me and picked me up that way, and uh, we're all in this together, and so it, it meant a lot. Dominic Lovett's had a really good year for the Memphis Receiver. What do you see from him today? Uh, I see a, a very good player, um, you know, just a sophomore, and you know, making plays and explosive and. I think they do a nice job of being creative, of finding ways to make sure they're going to get their touches. And uh, so, um, you know, you could see him 
and and uh, Luther Burden, you know, continuing to be guys that are playmakers. And on that, how's Brady Cook? He looks like he's improved kind of each week. Yeah, he he really is. I thought, uh, you know, he he's really doing a nice job, and and I think Eli and and their staff does a nice job of of uh, kind of doing what they do, but they give you a lot to look at, a lot of can like eye candy and different things, and then they they execute. You know, and it's a very evenly matched game. I mean, you sit there and look at them defensively and us. I mean, we're neck and neck. You know, offensively, we both are dead the same in 23 point, basically 24 points a game, you know. And so, um, you know, it's it's definitely a game that uh, is important to both of us. Mark, you talk about the elite teams in this league. Obviously, from where this was 10 years ago to now is – night and day different, but is the challenge almost different to make that last step into that elite tier, or is it the same, just you, takes more time? You, you just keep on grinding, you know what I mean? Keep on chopping that tree, you know, and, and just, that's what it is, and you and you try to, you know, put it together, but, you know, people don't just magically at the end of the year say, wow, that was just a great, you know, I mean, you string together days. You know, and have a good day, good days all the time, and then eventually you're going to have good weeks. And by God, you look at it at the end of it and say that was a good year. You know, but for all of us, including them, obviously it's day to day. And you know, fans and people, you know, and make could look at it differently because you have you know that that ability to do that. For 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 the rest of us, it's you know, for them, you know, it's the next challenge, and for us, it's the next challenge, win or lose. You know. Marcus, fans and media, we ultimately judge you on wins and losses, but the, as you just alluded to, as coaches, you kind of judge engaging by how your team has improved. Mm -hmm. Which which areas have you sensed the most improvement on the team this year? I, I think, uh, it, again, I mean, I think you know me better than to set me up for a punching bag and punch uh, punchline. I mean, there's obviously inconsistencies that aren't good enough, John, and, you know, I'm not pleased with it. So you're not going to get me to say that today, you know, but it's not all the wash either. You know, you know, it's there's some good and there's some bad. And we've been inconsistent, inconsistent. And I own that. You know, I, I, I have to accept that we didn't play good enough. Mark, how do you feel like Octavius has progressed this season? I think he's playing really hard. He needs to get his weight back up and his strength. But he's playing really hard. He gives us everything he has. He's quick. You know, with, with the lower weight, he's quick. But I'd like to see him get that strength back up. Mark, you mentioned Dr. Cap giving you a pick me up and that boy. Has Mitch given you the same? Yeah, absolutely. Mitch is always there. And, you know, I don't need an attaboy. You know, it, it's different. He didn't say attaboy. He just came over to just look me in the eye and say, hey, man, you know, like, let's go. You know what I mean? And, and so uh, – Nobody's happy with that. Mitch is not happy with that. I'm not happy with that. Dr. Capilouto is not. But that doesn't mean we're not all in the same corner. And you mentioned the coffee. What, what, what's your brand of coffee you drink? You know, like no, this is just straight right here. <laughs> yeah. Strong. I don't know, that machine, I just hit. I mean, I'm still wanting strong. <laughs> yeah, that's, right. Yeah, that's right. No chance. No sugar. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes. I, this is straight. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, attack me up or something. Um, is that the same thing you felt down to a say a guy like uh uh when it comes out? Absolutely. Our team is good that way and we've been for for years. That doesn't mean we're perfect. It doesn't mean players and coaches and people don't have emotions. And emotions run hot and high. Uh, they should. We're all competitors. Um, but at the end of the day, our team knows that, that we're a team and we're going to be unified. That doesn't mean that there's not accountability. There, there needs to be accountability. And our players need to continue to step up that accountability. You know, we have some really good leaders and we have some really young players. There's a, there's, there's a little different, you know. So our leaders need to lead and, uh, you know, need to, to push the accountability as well. I try a lot of things. Obviously, I fail sometimes in the motivation and the prep and the things, but I put a lot of time into it. And you know, and, but ultimately, right now, our players got to lead. Like you said, like you said, uh, with him, he can walk through real football. 
Yeah, that's right. There's no excuse. I mean, kick the ball through. I mean, that just because there's not an excuse in accountability doesn't mean we give up on each other either. You mentioned like about two time McLean. It seems like he is. You see more and more of him, and he seems yeah. to have the skill set that what Rich wants to do. I was really pleased with Jaton. I thought he really. Uh, He's running really tough. You know, when you when you see Chris in there and you see some of those runs and then the other backs get in, you can't help but step it up. And Jaton always been, been a competitor, and, you know, we've believed in him. And he's always been one of those guys that, like, really strains to do things right. He's not perfect. None of us are. But he, he tries to be. And uh, um, that's a good quality. Motivation tactics not always working. Do you go back to the South Carolina game this season as something that maybe didn't get through to the guys in the night of the game? I mean, you've covered the sport. I mean, you understand that, I, I would hope. You know, it, it's there, there's not a lot of teams that are going to play on point every game. I'd like to see one, you know, and you have to be good enough to coach better and to overcome it when you don't. And um, we weren't that night, you know, so no, no excuses. You know what I mean? I didn't do my job and, you know, other, others didn't as well. Again, I just said it three different ways. We're all in it together. Nobody's going to point fingers, but you also have to accept it and understand it. And it is what it is. Um, I, I can't, I, I, I can't even think back to that exactly and put any one, you know what I mean, one finger on it. Mark, when you got here, you talked about how it was going to be a process, no shortcuts, it would be a grind, and you've not strayed from that. And obviously there were big, big moments, and you credited the fans for lifting you up. But you got some fans now that are kind of panicking a little bit. What's the, uh, what's the message to them? I, I don't know. I did ask Tony and Susan on the way over here because I've been in my hole working. You know what I mean? And I said, what, what's going on? And they always give me a little, well, this or that. Just to make sure I know what you guys are going to hit me with, but, uh, um, but yeah, but <laughs> but yeah, that's between them. But uh, you know, I understand um, not being happy in in frustration. That's fans. That's good fans. There's there's a passionate there's some passionate fan bases. We just saw one too, you know, and uh, and they haven't always been happy, you know, and, and and ours hasn't always been happy. There's going to be good and there's going to be bad. Again, much like the players with that, we're all in this together. We, we accept that. We own it. And we still need them. So anybody that's going to jump off that quick, you know what I mean? Like frustration, yes. But just come back and cheer again. And then you could throw darts at me after the next one. But, you know, just keep on being fans. And, and I appreciate them. They've been awesome this year. And, and I've never shied away from it, the, 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 the criticism. It comes with the territory and – I mean, I would, I'd be uh, condescending if I said I liked it because I want to win, you know. But I, it doesn't deter me or fate, you know what I mean? Like, I, I know what it is. Mark, right. <clears throat> Nobody needs to be harder on us than us, you know. So, go ahead. <clears throat> There's two more, Tony. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Who had one? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, no, without a doubt, you know that. That's a that's a staple. You know what I mean? That that that's that's I, I you could tell my man. I'm gonna tell my team, and uh, you know. So, but we're n we're not gonna be faced. Like I said, that we gotta get right back at it this week. And and I understand that. Like fans are having their coffee, reading your, reading your articles, and that's that's. And I don't read them, and I'm sure there's criticism. I don't take offense to that. You know, that's your job, and it's not good enough. What more are you gonna? What more can I? You know, I've been hit on the chin many times. Believe me, and it, you know, I accept it, and I'll come right back. Recruiting never stops. So, what do you? What's your message to guys right now? Offensive skill position players, in particular, knowing Will's going to the draft, with offensive struggles. Just what's the vision you're selling? Well, I mean. It, they, they know our system, and they've seen it. You know, and they've seen it be successful, and they've seen us get guys' touches in the ball. We fell short, you know, and, and we're not good enough right, right now in certain areas, and, and part of that is on us. You know, and, you know, we, we, again, have to look at that and make sure we get that fixed. There's it's not many of us that haven't gone through that. 
I was going to ask about Tennessee. I mean, obviously, you're not the only defense that had trouble stopping him all year. They're not yeah. winning about every category. Is it scheme? Is it talent? Is it combination of the two? After seeing it up close, what makes it so difficult to stop? The scheme is very good. The tempo is good. Um, with the splits creates space and their quarterbacks making very good decisions. You know, obviously they have some playmakers, you know, so, um, you know, I think, you know, you just put it all together and they're playing at a very high clip. And, and that's what uh, does aggravate you some is because like, some of the things we're doing were really good, and some of it, some of it. Again, I don't want. I want to kind of quit because I don't want to put it on any one person. But there's a couple plays that, like that, that. Make a yeah, and it's and it's like why? You know, was it the tempo? Was it the distraction? You know what I mean? Like, you look at it on tape, and you're like, what the heck? I mean, not that it's easy. I'm not, again, I'm not being like that. Cause it's not. <laughs> but I think you just put it all together, and it's a lot on the guys. You know, that constant. For, force in your pressure, yeah. And mm. the offense that if you make just one little mistake, they're going to capitalize on it. Yeah, without a doubt. And especially when you've got a quarterback that's making really good reads. He's, he's putting the ball where he needs to. He's accurate on deep throws. And he can hurt you. He's pulling it down quick and just making those, you know, extending drives till they get to the next series with just little scrambles and yards and making quick, good decisions. Hey, Paul, thank you yeah. very much. Thank you.